she was born. Yeah. And her mother was the last born in the house before the after before the fire. She was only oh. three months old. Grandmother was two months old or so. Well. She was the very last. Hmm. Yeah. So, so it was the last. So our family had the last birds in both versions of the house. Yeah, grandmother <laughs> That's was wild. born in the house just before the fire. She was like two months old. Mm -hmm. No, she wasn't even enough to do it. Oh, no. I'm so cold. Yeah, my heart is Like a Today I am jumping straight into a video on Pedro St. James in Grand Cayman. As many of you who have been following my channel, and if you aren't, you should take this moment to subscribe real quick because I get lots of Cayman content coming as well as other travel content, tips, discussions, all sorts of stuff. We, we're getting active on here in 2023, so you should subscribe so that you don't miss out on anything. And like this video if you're interested in topics like this to make sure that YouTube sends you more of them, not just from me, but from other channels as well. Get that algorithm working on your behalf, people. Like, just make it work for you by liking things that you like. So if Pedro St. James or Grand Cayman is one of those things that you like, like this video. All right, so let's jump right in. I want to talk about five things that your tour guide probably won't tell you if you go on the tour at Pedro St. James in Grand Cayman. Now, this is a very popular tour, and I've made a video on this specific tourist location before. Um, I am an eighth generation Caymanian myself, and... I'll go ahead and jump right into fact number one, which is I actually come from the family that kind of made Pedro what it is. <laughs> if you go and you do the tour and you see the, um, the like video and the show at the beginning of the tour, that's my family history that you're learning about. So um, I want to tell you some things that you won't see in my previous video on Pedro and that you hopefully won't hear if you go on the tour. So I'm not spoiling the tour for you and some tidbits, tidbits, pardon me, and interesting facts that you'll hear on the tour. I'm not going to spoil any of that. But what I am going to do is tell you some things that can enhance that experience, whether you're watching this either before you've gone there and taken the tour for yourself or afterwards. Um, if you happen to watch this before, that might, you know, encourage you to try out some things you wouldn't have otherwise tried, or you'll see. Stay tuned. <laughs> so let's jump right in. All right, so for anyone who hasn't yet been to Pedro, or if you're just watching this video totally out of the blue, you don't even know what Pedro St. James is, and you're just like, I'm going to Grand Cayman, what's this about? <laughs> then I want to start out by reading out the blurb from Pedro St. James' website about what exactly Pedro St. James, or Pedro Castle, you may also know it as, what this location is. So let's read together. In the late 18th century, the population of the Cayman Islands was approximately 500 people, and Grand Cayman was little more than an undeveloped fishing village. With the use of slave labor, it was an Englishman named William Eden who built the expansive Great House and farmed the adjoining land as plantation. Um, just a quick aside, William Eden is my eight times, or eight or nine times, I think it's eight times, great-grandfather. Since its construction more than two centuries ago, Pedro St. James has been put to a variety of uses, including a courthouse, jail, government assembly, and restaurant. Surviving hurricanes, fires, vandalism, and rumors of being jinxed, it stands today in its restored state as a dynamic piece of Caymanian heritage. Perhaps best known as the birthplace of democracy in the Cayman Islands, Pedro St. James was the venue for a meeting on 5th of December, 1831, where the decision was made to form the first elected parliament. 
Later, on 3rd of May, 1835, Robert Thompson, sent from the governor of Jamaica, held a court at Pedro St. James to issue the proclamation ending slavery in the British Empire. Over the ensuing years, the building itself has been buffeted by hurricanes, struck by lightning, and engulfed by fire. The castle was abandoned by the Eden family in 1877 after lightning struck the main building, killing the daughter of the house, Mary Jane. Unused, it ultimately fell into decay, and by 1910, it was reported that only the original stone walls remained. The building was renovated by the Hurlston family, also my family, in 1914, but was then abandoned again in 1920. In 1959, actually, there's some history to the abandoning in 1920, but we won't get into that in this video. If you guys want to hear more about my family history and the details of this, I can bring on some of my, uh, the elders of my family to tell it in much greater detail. But let's move on. In 1959, a portion of the property was purchased by Thomas Hubble, who renovated the castle and lived there until 1963. It was operated as a restaurant and hotel from 1967 until it fell victim to a severe fire in 1970. It was repaired and again operated as a restaurant from 1974 until the late 1980s when it was damaged by a hurricane and another fire. In 1989, the restaurant operation went bankrupt, and the castle again sat vacant. Finally, in 1991, which was a good year for more than just this reason, because it was the year I was born, um, the property was purchased by the Cayman Islands government for develop as a historic site, and the Canadian firm of Commonwealth Historic Resource Management Limited was retained to develop a restoration and interpretation plan for the site. That work concluded in 1996 at a cost of approximately $8 million and produced the historic site that exists today. So there you go. A uh, brief but somewhat comprehensive history of Pedro St. James. Not as comprehensive, obviously, as what you'll see and hear and learn if you do the tour, but for those who are coming in blind and they're like, what the heck are we even talking about? There you go. So yeah, let's jump into five things that your tour guide probably won't tell you, <laughs> maybe won't tell, I don't know, the tour changes regularly and you can ask whatever questions you want, but I've also done it several times and these are five things that are usually not going to be said on the tour. So let's jump in. All right, so I spoiled a little bit by already getting into number one, which is that the historic family that founded Cayman and that built this house and that is responsible for all of this history is still right there. <laughs> in fact, if you go on the right day and at the right time, which honestly, I couldn't tell you right now when that would be, it can change week to week. But if you happen to go on the right day, my own great uncle, Stacy Hurlston, I call him Uncle Mickey. I don't know what name he'll introduce himself by. Probably Stacy. I think his name tag says Stacy. Um, and I'll include some videos of him here. But there's a very, very good chance that he will be your tour guide. So you will be getting a tour from a direct descendant from the Edens. Now, sometimes he does sort of blurt this fact out a little bit on the tour. Usually it's prompted. Someone will notice that he says something about his name and then they'll kind of notice it in common with other names later on in the tour. And sometimes it comes out that way. Um, but it's definitely not a planned and scripted part of the tour. Um, and if you'd like a little bit more information about the historic connections that the families in Cayman, that not just mine, but many families in Cayman have to um, Pedro St. James and the, again, historic figures there, feel free to ask your tour guide because they will tell you all sorts of connections that they themselves probably even have to the house. Um, for example, me, I am a descendant of the Hurlstons and the Edens. I'm an eighth, I believe, <laughs> we've done the ancestry before and the math always throws me off, but I'm pretty sure I'm an eighth generation Caymanian, meaning I go all the way back to the founding Edens of Pedro St. James. It was actually my great grandmother, Caroline Eden, known as Miss Carrie, who was the last person born at the great house at Pedro St. James. There used to be, back in the day, there was no hospital in Cayman, back when we're talking about Pedro times of history. Um, there was no hospital, and so many of the births of our family happened in this great house. And I'm actually direct granddaughter, great granddaughter, of the very last person to be born in the great house before one of the many fires that was mentioned in the history, the last sort of fire before, you know, people stopped, our family anyway, stopped living there. Um, 
yeah, that that's sort of my history. That's how close my ties are to this house. I love to go there anytime I'm in Cayman, and I spend a lot of time with my uncle. Um, he's like I said, he's my great uncle, but I just call him Uncle Mickey. He's my he's my uncle. Uh, I spend a lot of time with him, getting to know the history and all the different faces that used to live in the house throughout different points in time. Um, we have a lot of discussions <laughs> about politics and things. Uh, don't ask him about politics unless you want to go down a real rabbit hole. He's got some opinions that man. <laughs> love him. Don't always agree with him. <laughs> but there's fact number one is those historic families. The history is not as distant as you might think. Um, a lot of the things that are covered in the history you'll learn about in Pedro are still very, very, very relevant to our families to this day. Many of those things are still impacting some of our families to this day. Um, yeah, so there you go. One thing you may or may not learn <laughs> on the tour. Now let's jump into the other four because I think these ones, especially if you haven't been yet, you're going to be particularly interested in. All right, so here's fact number two that you probably won't learn on your tour at Pedro St. James. And I saved it for number two because I know some people won't watch this far into the video. And truthfully, I don't want that many people knowing about this one. <laughs> it's a well-kept secret. And honestly, many of us Caymanians would like to keep it that way. So if you decide to take any action after learning about this, this interesting tidbit to do with Pedro St. James, please do so respectfully. Pedro is a historic site that is my family's heritage home. And I'm telling you this because I'm hoping, I know my followers have been really, really awesome. I've met a lot of you in person. My subscribers, you guys are amazing. And I'm hoping that we continue this trend as the channel grows. You guys stay respectful if you go here and enjoy this little fact. All right, fact number two. Pedro St. James is home to what I think may be Cayman's only saltwater swimming pool. Natural saltwater swimming pool. Yes, that's right. If you bring swimwear and you're brave enough and you also don't kill yourself trying to get out there, yes, it's dangerous. Be careful if you try this. Um, there is a naturally occurring saltwater pool that happens in the Iron Shore just off of the green. Like when you're looking out from the house, you'll see all the green yard and then you'll see the Iron Shore, which is what we call that like rocky shore where it's not like the beach. It looks like iron. Um, and then you'll see the drop off. There's a big bluff and then water. When the waves come crashing up onto the Iron Shore, there's a certain spot in the Iron Shore where it kind of makes a nice little dish like a bowl. And the waves crash up and go into that cute little bowl and they make a natural saltwater swimming pool. And it is deliciously warm and it is wonderful. And even a lot of Caymanians apparently don't know about it. I didn't know that. I was talking to some people and I was like, did you go swimming at Pedro? And they were like, swimming? What are you talking about? And I was like, never mind. Because <laughs> like I said, it's a really well kept secret. Um, however, please, as I mentioned, be respectful if you go out there. And be careful if you go out there. Don't be go trying to like bring 23 friends and having a party. That's not respectful. And don't go running out in your flip flops thinking that it's that easy to access. Because I'm telling you right now, it's dangerous. We're talking about the Iron Shore. This is like craggly, iron tough rocks that have big holes and pits in them. And you're on the edge of a bluff. So if you fall over, you're going into deep water and it's going to be a minute before anyone can get around to rescue you. So I really don't suggest that most people try out this natural saltwater pool. But if you're like a rock climber or an adventurer by nature and you've done stuff like this before and you know how to safely get out there, you're wearing the proper shoes and you want to go enjoy the saltwater pool, you can do so. Nobody's going to stop you, but no one's also going to go out there and save you if you fall down and cut your head open on the rock, okay? Because nobody else is trying to get injured. So just this has been a, a little known fact for many reasons. Um, and I'm probably going to get a lot of hate for sharing it because people don't want to have to be coming out there after tourists rescuing people all the time. But it's also known. Like if you really went out and stumbled across enough information on Cayman online, there are pictures of it. There's videos of people in there. So it's not that much of a secret. Um, and I'm hoping that by telling you about it with the necessary disclaimers, <laughs> you guys will be safe and be respectful if you discover, if you go out there and you want to try swimming in it 
instead of, you know, somebody who finds it online and thinks that it's just like easy access and that they can show up with a whole party of people and get drunk first and then go out there. And then next thing we know, we have 15 people drowning. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. I've noticed that, the you know, the more and more people are learning about this. Um, and I don't want them to go out there thinking it's that easy to access or, you know, that the government's going to particularly appreciate you crawling around the Iron Shore on what is essentially their land. So be respectful, be safe. But overall, I don't really recommend you try it out. It's, it's probably not a good idea, but just a fun fact, it exists. <laughs> okay, tip number three about Pedro St. James. It is an absolute animal haven. Now, we don't technically have a zoo in Cayman that I'm aware of, and the Botanical Gardens has a lot of animals, but again, they're free roaming, and you can't always see what you go there wanting to see. The other time, the last time I went there, um, I really thought I was going to see a bunch of blue iguanas, because the time before, I saw absolute tons of blue iguanas. But for some reason, maybe it was the weather, maybe it was the particular timing of my visit, Maybe it was some other reason, but I did not see... I think I saw maybe one blue iguana, like from a distance. And usually they're teeming all over the place. So there are certain other places on the island that are known for animal viewing. You've got the turtle farm, you have the botanical gardens. There's another location too that slipped my mind at the moment, but if I remember it, I will put the text on the screen when I'm editing this. Um, but there are a number of places you can go to see animals in Cayman, and I just wanted to share this fun tidbit because I think a lot of people don't realize that Pedro St. James is on that list. Um, they have <laughs> the cutest cats, first of all. It's just a haven for cats. And my Uncle Mickey certainly takes very good care of them, which encourages them to stick around and, and make it their home. We have Lily, as seen here in some of my video clips, and Lil Baby. <laughs> Little baby is a boy, FYI. They don't really get along, apparently. Little baby and Lily, they're they're not besties, but they're both super cute. Um, and there are others, but those are the ones that I got video of last time I was there. There is also a chicken coop. There used to be a donkey named Jack. Um, we don't really talk about him. Don't bring him up to my uncle. He'll be very sad. I actually don't remember if Jack moved or passed away, but something happened and Jack's not there anymore, so don't mention Jack the donkey. But... There are always <laughs> different animals that kind of make Pedro their home and get adopted by the staff and the workers there, um, as well as animals that naturally roam and come and go, just like you would see at the botanical gardens or really any sort of naturally maintained location in Cayman. So just know that you'll get to go, and especially if you have time after your tour, you want to stick around and hang out a little longer, um, you can absolutely ask the staff members there what kind of animals they have on the property, and I'm sure they will be more than happy to show you around. The animals are super cute. Um, Cayman is also known for its free-roaming chickens, so you'll probably see a bunch of them as well. And yeah, just enjoy the atmosphere because the animals do, and it's definitely one of many animal havens in Cayman. All right, here's fun fact number four about Pedro St. James that you may not learn on your tour if you take one. And that is that Pedro is a really awesome festival and event venue. A lot of people think of more typical places for hosting festivals and events in Cayman, like the Lions Club is a big place where a lot of people host concerts and shows. But I've also seen quite a few, um, usually it's more like office building type crowds, um, will book Pedro St. James as their festival or event venue. And it is a gorgeous venue. I'm sure it's not cheap. Maybe it is actually because it's a National Historic Site. It's government. So there's probably some standard pricing. But it's a beautiful, beautiful space. Um, and you may even notice when you're driving around Cayman, you'll see different like <laughs> billboards, some of them legit, some of them like makeshift, advertising different parties like cooler parties, you know, cooler fet, whatever's going on. Um... Sometimes it's themed parties, like if Halloween is coming up or something. And sometimes you'll notice they are held at the grounds at Pedro. And that's what that's talking about. It's talking about that big green space in front of the house, the, the front of the main grand house. They'll put tents up and a stage and sound systems and like treat it like an actual festival grounds and full event venue. It is also one of the most stunning places I could think of to host a wedding. So if you're looking for a location, you love Cayman, and you want somewhere historic, beautiful, quiet, peaceful, full of nature, full of just uh, stunning. It's a great spot. Choose it. 
um, so yeah, festival and event venue, and a highly underrated one at that. And finally, this one's kind of silly, I'm not gonna lie, but it's just something that they don't brag about, and I honestly think it's adorable and should be bragged about, <laughs> which is that uh, K-Man's only 4D theater is right there at Pedro St. James. We do have a big sort of normal movie theater at Kamana Bay, where you can go and you can watch the latest, you know, big film that's come out, Hollywood movie or whatever, but... That little historic show that you watch in the little theater at Pedro St. James with the interactive elements of the sets and the rain. I'm not, I'm not going to spoil too much, but there's, there's sets, there's interactive elements, and it honestly is not too far off from being like Universal Studios <laughs> type of setup. It is truly K-Man's only 4D theater and K-Man's only unique um, sort of interactive. You almost could call it a 5D theater because I think there is even like a rain effect and like a thunderstorm at some point. Anyways, my point is it is the only theater of its kind in K-Man. So it is worth paying the extra. It's like 10 or $15, I think, depending on if you're if you're a K-Manian or a tourist and if you're a child or an adult. But it's it's cheap and it's worth it. Just have the experience. It's so cute. It's such a like K-Man experience and it's really worth it. And it does a really good job of representing our history and our culture and teaching people a little bit more about it in an entertaining and interactive way. I think you'll also appreciate some of the things you see around the grounds and in the house uh, if you actually do the tour and do the theater first. So highly recommend it. It is the only theater of its kind in K-Man and who knows how long it's going to stay like that. It's been, this theater has not changed in years. I remember it being exactly like this when I was a child. So go get the experience before it changes. If you've ever seen old school K-Man stuff and you're one of those people that's like, I can't believe how much K-Man is changing and building up and it's just not the same. And you have not experienced the Pedro St. James Theater. Do yourself a favor and go experience the Pedro St. James Theater before it changes. Because everything evolves eventually. But this is a gem. And I love this theater and the experience. So go experience it. Yeah, so with that, I'm going to wrap it up. I just wanted to, like I said, use the footage that I caught when I was there in July um, and went to spend time at Pedro because I just like going there and spending like hours there just exploring and hanging out and chatting with my uncle. In some future video, I want to talk to you guys a little bit more about my connections to Cayman as a Caymanian and as a multicultural Caymanian at that. I mentioned it a little bit in the beginning of this video when I was reading out the history of Pedro. It talks about how it was a combination of these sort of founding fathers, they call them, as well as slaves on this property that kind of made Pedro and also Cayman what it was. And my history and my family very much comes from those two different worlds. And I have a unique perspective, both on Cayman as well as on other things as a result. And I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, because of reasons that I'll get into in that video. Anyways, just so you guys know, if you have any questions about me, about Cayman culture, heritage, experience as a Caymanian, experience as a multicultural person in Cayman, um, put them in the comments, because these are things that I want to talk about going forwards. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit something you may not have known about Pedro before. Maybe at least one of the five <laughs> things was new to you. Let me know in the comments below. Hit like if you like topics like this. I don't even care if you don't like this video. Interact with it if you want topics on Cayman, on Pedro St. James, on Caribbean history, anything like that. If you're interested in these topics, um, like tips for travelers, anything in that realm, like this video, hit subscribe because the algorithm will send you stuff like that. It helps me and it helps you. All right, see you in the next one. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> there he is. Oh, he's extra creepy. He looks like Michael Myers. <laughs> I feel like he got creepier than the last time I was here. <laughs> oh, I did on Christian. Uh, on the splice. In the land, so about 150 feet. 25 fathoms. No, I said in fathoms. Everything we do is in nautical terms. Mm -hmm. We're sea people. Yep. Um, and then, you can't see where they splash it. Mm -mm. Then nope. three strands of this would be wound into one with this machinery. Oh, see? Wow. And then you wind it into one. Yeah. With that, the center, the cart, the winch, mm. and in the center, the cob. Mm -hmm.